what are the um, common questions that you often find in this area? Oh, the biggest questions probably around uh, about the individual foragers, you know, like how long they last, what, what are people's expectations, and managing expectations of foragers is actually probably a large part of this this discussion because we make sure we don't overreact to time frames and make sure we get economic gain out of those time frames is a quite an important outcome of that discussion. Super. And uh, from what I understand from your talk, the discussion around uh, foragers that have been in existence for a long time, we're taking yeah. a slightly different view to yeah, those. Yeah, absolutely. I think probably the biggest development that's occurred just recently with the different foragers has been that we're starting to identify their potential in their own right. So a, a really, really good example would be red clover. A lot of deer industry people put red clover in their pastures, they value it for uh, general ad addition to a, a pasture mix, but uh, if you put it out by itself, I think a lot of people wouldn't realise how much it can produce in a lot of different environments. Uh, and so once you start to understand that, you can actually specifically look at red clover as a forage system and it fits the deer. Uh, production cycles and many of the finishing and lactation cycles really well. Absolutely brilliant source of protein for the animals. Excellent. Like Free time. nitrogen, yeah. um, a good protein, uh, doesn't lose quality, maintains itself, can be stored and maintain relatively high quality even as it deteriorates over time. So yeah, really good, interesting tool. Excellent. That's